back to Sunday school? No? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. Amen. It's great to be in adult Sunday school today. There we go. <laughs> It's been an interesting week, I think, for all of us. I hope you guys had an interesting week, too. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. If we could stand, we're just going to open up in prayer, and we'll just hop right into it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for bringing us, Lord, here again, Lord, to worship, to praise you, Lord, to lift up your name in this place, Lord, to study your word, to hear what you have to say to us. Lord, pray, Lord, that you bless the adult Sunday school. Bless the children as they are in their Sunday school as well, Lord. Will let us all just learn something, glean something from your word today. Be with us and touch those who aren't here. And in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seen. All right, well, I'm just going to pop this one off. All right. Amen. i got to start with a question, I guess, for the couple of us that are here. But why do you come to church? Ah. Uh, Hopefully it's not too early to ask this type of question. But why do you come to church? Worship God. To worship God. Well, I thought you were all going to try and guess stuff, but that is correct. Amen. We come here to worship, to praise, to uplift Jesus Christ. To praise God for everything that he has done for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. For the things that he has done and for the things that he will do. Right. Amen. Amen. That's the, that's the faith that we have today. Now, unfortunately, some people do come to church with, for social reasons, for other reasons. But as he said, the main reason why each and every one of us come to church is to praise the Lord, to worship Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're going to turn our Bibles to Psalms chapter 150. Psalms chapter 150, just reading verses 1 through 6. Amen. Thank you. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. And praise Him according to His excellent grace. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. 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 That is the main reason why we come to church. Amen. That is why we worship God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. But nature, even in itself, praises God. Amen. We can read in Psalms chapter 8, which we will read here in a second. But we have to remember, and David, this is from the psalmist is David. David they, they believe that David wrote this. But back in those times, they didn't, have, they didn't see the world as how we see the world. All that, they saw, all that they could understand of the world is by what they saw. Right. And that's how we understand it as well. But we have it a little bit easier because we do have people who go to the moon. And we can see what the world actually looks like. We can see what it looks like from that type of view. We see the sphericalness of it. We see your, we see everything about it. Amen. Even just, if you've ever looked at the pictures, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of like in awe. Yeah. To understand that how God created it all. Mm -hmm. I understand there are theories about how everything was created. We have the theory of evolution, the theory of how life began, the theory of the planets from a big bang to anything like that. But that's not how it would have happened. Amen. Anything, have you ever, has anyone ever seen an explosion? Anything ever blow up? Nothing is ever made from an explosion. You can't have, no, you can't have something from nothing. That's literally it's a law of nature, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But God can make, can make something from nothing. Right. Amen. Amen. Each and every one of our lives, like for what God has done, He took, I don't say nothing, because I don't want to demean anyone and call you nothing, but he, he took us from kind of like nothing, but He made us each something. and every one of us something mm -hmm. in some way shape or form. You know, we can look back on our lives and we can just see how the hand of God has been upon it. And I think the same the thing people can say about like with children in their in their houses and just when they look back they can see just how they developed 
Now understand, like, God does have influence, but you also have an influence as well on how that child, on how they develop. Amen. But you can you can tell how like when like I how I've become myself. It wasn't because of me or anything like that. It was a little bit, but also my parents would have had influence, and God had influence as well in my life to make me the man that makes you the man or woman today who you are. Amen. In Psalms eight three through nine, we read again what how David would have seen his world at that time, how he would have seen the expression of how of who God was. And he said, when I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, that's all that he really had to see, only the things that were around him. He, he, he couldn't see what it looked like from an airplane or from a very, from that type of an altitude, unless they climbed up a mountain. But still, again, that's not as high as that we can see. Which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Right. Why would God even care about you and me? Mm. He has so much in this universe but he chose to focus on you and me. Yeah. He chose to focus on the human race. He chose to, to focus on sinners, on a fallen man, on a creation that would betray him, that would spit in his face, that would do pretty much everything you can to get a parent angry, pretty much. <laughs> They're that child that they just know what the buttons to push and what to do to, to wrong. But God loved us. That thou art mindful of him. And the son of man, that thou, would, that thou visitest... Him. Again, why would God even pay attention to us for all the things that we do and everything? But for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. Amen. Thou made, madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea, O Lord, O God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Amen. The awe that David would have saw in God. And what, and what he did see in God. Amen. I said, what, what, David, what, what David was talking about here was about God's greatness. God's inexplicable. That, that, how we don't understand why he would even care for us in the first place. As, as I said, there's so much that he has created, that he has done, but he gave us dominion over it. He gave us dominion over these things. We see the, 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 the night sky, the moon, the stars. This is what taught David to believe yeah. in the power of the Creator, in the power yeah. of God. That's all that he had. We, we have so much more nowadays. Science has advanced, things have advanced, and just looking at things, we can see it on a molecular lever, level, but it just shows the greatness and just the awesomeness of God. Amen. Amen. But as I said, all of creation, it speaks to the glory of the Creator. Because if you look at, if you go on to, as, um, to the science side, with, <laughs> uh, with, with theories and whatnot, because it still is the theory of evolution, it, it's never been proven, and it will never ever be pro proven. But when we can say that God created it, it's not like a shortcut, it's just that God created it. <laughs> That's just, I don't want to say an open simplification, but it is, it is the answer. How, how it came together and whatnot, it's just God spoke it into existence. Right. When we read Genesis, it's just God spoke and it happened. That's how it happened. Amen. But even our, our bodies are, are itself, we are uniquely designed as vessels of worship. Mm -hmm. Amen. Of vessels of praise of God and for the works that he has done. Even looking at a small child's brain, or even just a, a normal adult's brain, if, if, you, if you would just break down all the calculations that you made even to make yeah. it here today, yeah. or even when you speak, the amount of neurons, the amount of like calculations and everything that's going on in your voice, the, the, the tempo, how fast you speak, how you pronounce, yeah. all that is going instantaneously in your mind. When you're driving, when you're turning... When you're turning on your signal, when you're looking in your mirror, you're, you're making those judgment calls. There's a guy too close or right beside you. You're not going to turn over and ram into them because <laughs> that's just you, you. You you understand that calculation in your head. And you're like, okay, this I'm not going to do this. Now sometimes we can uh, we can we can it can be dulled a bit, unfortunately. And praise God, but <laughs> Amen. But we can, we do make mistakes on, on that level too. But anyway, but. We, no, no matter how much computers um, become faster and faster and faster, 
they're never ever going to compete with the human brain with the calculations that you do even as I said even when it comes to speaking even a child when they speak has more capacity than a computer amen that's the science behind it. And in Psalms 139 and 14, the psalm says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Amen. Doesn't matter what you look like, doesn't matter how you talk, doesn't matter how you think, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Amen. Our bodies, we are made to worship God. There are reasons why we can raise our hands, we can raise our voices, we can do anything to praise God. The psalm said you can, like when, when people dance or anything like dance before the Lord or anything like that, there are ways no matter what capacity you are, mental capacity, that you can still worship and praise God. Amen. Amen. Yes. And God, He desires for each and every one of us to worship Him. Yes. Amen. On a side note, there are things in our lives that we do worship. Some people can worship cars. Some people can worship food. Uh, some people worship the pleasures of this life. We can go on and on. I know in this in our day and age right now, like with video games and with movies and with everything else, we can we can, we tend our, our it's what we elevate in our lives. Now it's all right we can enjoy things, yes, but when we elevate it to that to that place of like either near God or over God, then there is a problem. Yep. Amen. Because as I said, inherently we want to worship something. Yeah. We want to put our invest our time. We want to we want to worship something to fill that void yeah. in our life. And then, as I said, with the psalmist, especially when reading the psalms, they understood our natural inclination for worship. Amen. There's a reason why we can play instruments, or, we, or you can learn to play instruments. <laughs> it, it's to worship God. Amen. Amen. Some of us, we can just clap our hands. Some of us can jingle the tambourine. <laughs> Amen. But we can worship and we can praise Amen. God. Amen. Yes. But we have to set our hearts to worship God. That, that is a choice that each and every one of us have to make, to worship God. Amen. When I clap my hands, I, I make that conscious decision when I clap my hands, when I shout or when I sing or when I praise God, it's, it's my decision because I want to worship Him. Amen. Amen. Because He is the only one who's worthy of our worship. Nothing in this world can ever satisfy. Only Jesus can satisfy our souls today. Amen. 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 So we just need to, to keep, our, keep our minds on that when we Worship when we praise, we need to keep only in God in that position. Amen. To put Him first. Amen. Above all in our lives. Amen. Amen. In his, and in, in His sanctuary and in His power. In Psalms 150, it, it comes to the end of Psalms because it is in, in musical terms, it's, it's the end phrase, I guess, in a way. And at the, at the beginning of Psalms, it, it was kind of, it's very unique comparing the first of Psalms and the last of Psalms. So in Psalms chapter 1, I have a little bookmark. <laughs> it reads, Blessed is the man. Now, we're, we're going to do a little comparing here between the first one and the last one when it comes to worship. So this is the very, in the book of Psalms, so chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinner, nor, seat, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Amen. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the godly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The Lord God know, for the Lord knoweth the way of the white righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. And so when we read that, that blessed is the man. And you want to know, you want to know something? When we are blessed, when, when we do the right things, when we don't walk in the way of ungodly counsel, when we walk in the way of godly counsel, when we read the Bible, when we, when we study and we don't stand in the way of sinners, because that's one of the, I don't say not one of the heart, but it's one of the things that when Looking back on in Christianity as a whole, we can see how they stood in the paths of sinners. It said this is Christianity in, 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 in the generalist terms, but like where they were sin, where people weren't even allowed to even to read the Bible. To, some people couldn't even come to church if they if you were of this profession or if you did that or this or that, then you couldn't do then you couldn't come to God. Then you couldn't worship and praise Him. Unfortunately. 
people did get in the way of other people. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we need to, to delight in the law of the Lord. We need we want to see sinners saved. We want to see we want to see the pews here filled with sinners. Amen. 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 Because we want to see them saved. We want to see their life transformed. We know that their life can be transformed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. By the power of God. And as I said, when we read when we read these these verses here, blessed as I said, blessed is the man, but it leads into that and and at the end of Psalms one, in Psalms 150, it leads into that worship. Amen. Because if you do these things, you're going to want to worship God. You're, want, you're going to want to worship, worship Him with the, with the trumpet, with the psaltery, with the harp. Right. With timbrel, with dance, with the stringed instruments, with organs, loud cymbals, high-sounding cymbals. You just want, I don't want to say make a noise, but you just want to worship Him in any way, shape, or form that you can. Right. Right. And the, that's the same thing with, with music and with orchestra. Every instrument has a different sound. Uh -huh. And each and every one of us, we have a different sound to our worship, the way that we worship. I don't worship the same way as Brother Pillay does, and Brother Pillay doesn't worship the same way that I do. Right. And the same thing with each and every one of us. We don't worship the same way. But, and it doesn't sound the same. And that's okay. Yeah. It, just like with any type of musical instrument, as I said, there's always... A different sound from the lute to the violin to the flute to, I don't know, the woodwind with the whistling. I don't know. <laughs> but it's, it's, we're, we're, it's, it's okay. We don't need to compare ourselves one to The scripture does tell us not to compare ourselves one to another. Amen? Because there are some people who can get up here, who can dance, who can jump. Up, I don't say jump about, but they, it's just how they worship. And I don't need to feel bad that I don't worship the same way. Amen? You don't need to either. Amen. Amen. And we even we need to worship him for his mighty acts and everything that God does in our lives. Whether we see it, whether we feel it, or whether we just don't see it, or whether you don't feel it. Amen. God is still working in each and every one of our lives. He's blessing each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Every day that we wake up, every day we get to go to work, every time we get our paycheck, I'm blessed. Yes. <laughs> God Amen. blesses us. Amen. 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 Um, even from even just moving and getting a new house, God blesses us. Amen. They have a fantastic house, by the way. Amen. <laughs> but in Genesis, we read that God opens, it, it starts with a booming voice from the darkness, let there be light. Amen. Just from the word of God. Amen. Just, just the, the magnitude, just, just this earth that's around us, what we have, the things that we have to build with, the iron, the minerals, copper, gold, silver, the things that we can build things with is because of God. Amen. Because he created it all in the beginning. Amen. Everything that we have now, oil, water, it's all because of him. And praise him for his mighty acts in Psalms 1, 150 and 2. That's what it says. Praise him for his mighty acts. And surely you can find something to praise, something to worship God about today. Amen. You can, Amen. You can find it out. You can just think about it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it'll be there. And also we need to mean our worship and how we worship. We need, there needs to be a sincerity in it. Has anybody ever, when we've got, have you ever been uh, at work, has anybody ever like said, oh, you've done a great job at work. You know, you've worked, you've worked hard all day. You've done this, you've done that. But then they can go to the, the person who's like beside you, who you work with, and they haven't done anything all day. And they can give the same type of praise, the, the same type of sincerity like they did to you as well. And not that you need to receive those things, but you can, it, 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 it kind of hollows out the, uh, the meaning behind it, of the compliment, that's the word I'm looking for, of the compliment behind it. No, you did a great job today, Sister Play, and then, as I said, the person who's working beside you, they could say the same thing, and they didn't, they didn't do not as much as you, or they didn't do anything at all. <laughs> Amen. But when we praise God, we don't, we don't want to be like that. We don't want to be like a hollow. Mm. I don't want to be hollow in my worship or hollow in my praise. Amen. I, I want to meet each and every bit of it. Yes. When I lift up my name, when I, when I lift up his name, when I just praise God for everything that he does. Yes. Amen. We also worship God with music as well. Amen. Something about when we start worshiping God, when we start, when, when we move into that, I guess, worshiping session, I, 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 song service, there we go. Amen. And when we start to praise, when we start to sing, when we start to elevate the name of Jesus, when we praise Him, when we worship Him, it's just, it's that atmosphere that we create. Amen. And when God enters in, 
And when, we, when he starts to speak to us, when his spirit starts to move, when you start to feel, when you start to feel him in this place. Amen. Whether it's just through the piano, I think we've all sung a cappella even by ourselves at your home, you know. If you're going through something, sometimes a song comes and you just, you can either belt it out or just, you sing it softly, but it ministers to your soul. Yeah. It ministers to you because you're worshiping, you're praising him and God will always answer that. Amen. He inhabits those. Amen. Even, as I said, when it comes to music on the, even on the lightest little note on the keyboard or on the softest note here and there or the hardest note, it doesn't matter. Amen. We're just worshiping and praising the Lord. Amen. We have many reasons to praise and worship the Lord today. Yes, amen. As I said, praise ye the Lord is how it is in Psalms 156 and 6. That's the best way I can say it. But praise ye the Lord in everything that goes on in your life. To praise Him, whether in the good times, whether in the bad times, whether you're hurt or whether you're happy. Amen. We need to praise the Lord. Amen. And praise and worship, it, it, it should come naturally to each and every one of us. Amen. Unlike us, God is not struggling with a, an image problem, a self-image problem that we help him. We don't uplift his ego because he, he doesn't have, have an ego. <laughs> but Israel's praise in the Old Testament, it, 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 it served a purpose. Yeah. Our praise and our worship, it serves a purpose. Yeah. Why? Because it teaches others of God's greatness as well. Yes. When you say praise the Lord or anything like that or those who are around you, it's it's just understanding the greatness of God. That's why you're doing it because if he wasn't great, we wouldn't worship him. If he wasn't merciful, if he wasn't all these things, we wouldn't worship him. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. For his great exploits, for everything that he's done, his tender mercies, his unfailing love, his mighty power, the righteousness of his judgment and the holiness of his words and the blessing of living a, a separate life it should cause each and every one of us yes. to worship him. Amen. And Amen. even as, as adults, when there's, children, when there's people around us, whether it's children or just those people who don't know about God, mm -hmm. um, when you... <laughs> uh, sorry, I just lost the train of thought here. But in Israel's time, when they went to the temple, when they, when they went and did all these things, the younger generation would have looked on. Yeah. Because it was the adult's um, responsibility to go to the tabernacle, to offer praise, to offer these sacrifices, whether it was for the wave offering or worship offering or anything like all these different offerings that they had. But it was the young people who would have looked on. Mm -hmm. And that's the importance of, I guess, a mature Christian. We'll use that. That's the better word. For a mature Christian, because the young people... The, that the next generation coming up, they would never, they would never know God the way that you know Him as well. They would, they would. As I said, Israel, the young Israelites would never have known God, and unfortunately, that's kind of what. When you look at Israel's problem, it was because of the current generation, because we are the current generation. It was because of the current generation they let down on going to the tabernacle. They let go. They let down yeah. on doing the things of God. They let down on following His word. Of going, as I say, going to the tap, offering these praises every single day. Yes, it might seem like it, it might seem a little ritualistic, but I mean, if you mean it, it's different. They said, when there's sincerity in it, it's different. As I said, when they when they looked on, it, and when that current generation, when they failed to do those things mm -hmm. properly, then you start to see that slow fading away. When you start to see, when you start to see the because it was the young Israelites who turned who turned mm -hmm. from God. But it was because of the, the older generation. It was because of the, the ones, I guess, the adults, the ones who were supposed to be doing it. They let go, and then the next generation let go. And then it just goes from there. It just digresses, 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 digresses. And then it's just awful because it's awful of sin. And Israel, Israel did everything, that, as I said, <laughs> that could be done wrong. <laughs> they did it. Amen. But we need to give ourselves wholly over to God. Amen. And we need to, to keep that in mind because... Yes, I want to be saved, but I also want the next generation behind me to be saved. Yes, as I said, I, I want to make it to heaven, but I also want to see them make it to heaven as well. I want them to know the truth as I know the truth. Amen. Amen. That's, that, that should be each and every one of our purposes. I don't want to put, put, throw a burden on you right now, but 
that is kind of our, it's our responsibility as the current saints mm -hmm. in God's kingdom. Right. Amen. It is our responsibility. Yes. Amen. To, and, it's, and to praise the Lord, to uplift his name, to keep his works. Mm -hmm. Amen. And to teach why. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the importance of being, a, I guess, when, when teaching or whether you're, as I said, as a parent, is to teach yeah. your children the yeah. right way. Amen. Because again, it is their choice, but again, they, most likely they won't turn away from it. Because you're always, I always remember the things that my parents say, <laughs> most of the time. Sometimes I do forget, but anyway. Amen. But God has a purpose through each and every one of us. Doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter where you are in life, there's a purpose through you. You're impacting someone. Yes. As I said, whether it's a family member, or whether it's even a student at work, or a co worker, or anything like that, you're impacting someone somehow. Yes. Amen. And as I said, we need to make that conscious decision to praise the Lord. Amen. Each and every one of us. Praise ye the Lord is not just a verbal command. It is the unspoken command that should be in part of each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. It is what people will hear from your life whenever they think of you. Mm -hmm. Amen. As Brother Play, he knows the impact that we had with David here last Sunday. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you saw, we saw that impact because of the way that you live. Amen. He said that there was something, something different about him. Mm -hmm. Amen. And just being that type of music, playing with God's music. Mm -hmm. Amen. It, it teaches others, as I said, of the glory of God, and it compels them in a thousand ways to, to want to come to church, to want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it ends with, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Everything in this universe, everything in this world that we live in, Amen. It praises the Lord in one way, shape, or another. From the structures that we build to anything like that, to the lives that each and every one of us live, it praises the Lord whether you realize it or not. You, know, you wake up in the morning when, to whatever that else that you do. Praise ye the Lord. Put Him first in your life. Amen. 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 If we could stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I just I know it's the morning time. I know some of us are a little sore and a little tired. Amen. But I think if we could just lift our voices and let's just give him some praise and some worship right now. That is why we're here in this place. Not out of duty, not out of anything like that. We came because we wanted to worship the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord. We want to lift you up in this place, Lord. We want to worship you, Jesus. We want to praise you, Lord. Lord, you've seen the, the, the week that we've all had. Lord, you've seen the struggles. You've seen the things that we have gone through, Lord. But we want to lift you up and we want to praise you, Lord Jesus, because of all the things that you have done for the impacts, Lord, that you have on each and every one of our lives. And how your spirit, Lord, is working through us. Sometimes whether we realize it or whether we don't, Jesus, Lord, the impact, Lord, that music, Lord, that you are playing, Lord, that is coming forth from us. Whether we hear it or whether we not, don't, Jesus. We want to praise you. We want to lift you up. We want to worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything, Lord, that you have done. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings that you have outpoured on each and every one of us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping us in the palm of your hand, Lord. For comforting us, for strengthening us, for just lifting us up, Lord, in these times of struggles, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything, Lord, that you do, Jesus, Lord. Don't ever let us lose that praise. And let's not don't pray, Lord, that each and every one wouldn't lose that worship that we have for you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. In this place. Hallelujah. We want to worship you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Something about when we worship. Praise the Lord, isn't it? Amen. It brings a, I don't see a sombering feeling as well, but it's just, amen. Praise the Lord. Let's, never, let's not forget that, to praise ye the Lord. 